What's up everyone and welcome back to part 3 of my how to build a crosscard series. In this series I'm showing you everything you need to know about building one of these racing machines. I'm using my self made plans which will be for sale soon on my website for only $35. Now so far I've built this frame and gave it fully independent suspension all around. And in this part I will be building the driveline. I've been thinking quite a lot about how to build this driveline and I think I've ended up with the simplest and cheapest solution. So what I will be using for this are parts of a front wheel drive car. These parts can be found at pretty much every scrapyard and will be cheap and easy to work with. And because they're from a car, they are more than strong enough. So what you need are the drive shafts and front hubs. Particularly this flange with the spine and this bearing. The bearing will be pressed in the rear hub, which we made in the previous episode, and the spline flange goes into the bearing. Now, it's important the drive shafts have a ball pattern like this on one side and the spline like this on the other side. Now, I suggest you use a car from the VAG group because they all use this ball pattern, whereas other brands may have a spline on this side as well. Now, as you can see, there's a long shaft and a short one. This is because in the front wheel drive car the gearbox is mounted off center and the non equal drive shafts are needed to compensate for this. And later on in the video, I'll show you how to lengthen or shorten them. And finally, to connect the drive shafts to each other and to the engine, we will make a center shaft. This shaft will also have the brake disc and sprocket on it. And there will be no differential, which will benefit drifting and grip. Now let's get started by making the mounts for the center shaft, which need to come inward a little bit to make room. This way I can have the drive shafts the same length as the A-arms. And as I've been getting some questions recently about how I'm measuring bend tubing, I'll show it in some more detail. Okay, I think that's enough talking, let's get to building.
Okay, so now we come to quite a critical point, the center shaft. Now this shaft will sit in between the CV joints and have our chain sprocket on here and our brake disc. And it will rotate on these bearings of course. And I think you just saw me mount the plates on the frame to mount these bearings. Now the plates have little slots in them, so we can adjust it to tension the chain. And on both sides we'll have these parts and then this will connect to our CV joint. So that's very nice. But there is one problem. Now what I'll do is weld these on here and this one on this side. And the problem with that is we can never get this bearing out again because, well, this is in the way. So if this bearing fails, uh, we'll have to remake the part or cut it to pieces or a lot of work. But there would be a solution, which would be to get some sort of keyway in here and in here, or cut a spline in here, or get a spline shaft and then cut a spline in here and make them together so you can take it apart. But it could be done, but it will be very tricky. So what I'll do is just weld them on the easiest way and hope the sparing doesn't fail. And I'm pretty sure it will last very long. So that's what I'm going to do. Now to weld it strongly, I'll weld it on the inside and on the outside here. So that's what I'll do with this. And then to mount my brake disc, I have this plate, which I will turn down to fit the disc. And this plate to fit the sprocket. And the brake disc will come from the bike, by the way. And the sprocket will not come from the bike because we need more teeth on here or a bigger sprocket because we need to gear it down a little bit. So enough talking, let's weld this on here and put this in.
So here's my drive shaft so far with the brake disc adapter. Fits really nice. Nice and snug. Tapped all these holes. So that's good. And off camera I made this. Which is basically the same as this, but for the sprocket. Now there's two reasons why I made this on this shaft and this part separate. First of all, this doesn't fit on my lathe, so I had to clamp it in with the shaft. And this way, I know this is also perfectly flat and doesn't have any waving in it, because if there's a wave in this, you will feel it in your brake. And second reason is, I don't know where the sprocket has to go yet in this direction, because I don't have the engine yet. And of course the engine and the sprocket should be perfectly aligned. So I'll just slide it on for now. And then when I have the engine, I'll weld it on. So next step, put on the bearings and then mount these on here. And first I'll just tack them on and then later I'll fully weld them. And then we can start making the drive shafts. Okay, so that's my center shaft in place. Very nice. And now to make the drive shaft going from here to wheels. And what I have to do with this. Mmm, <coughs> the sweet smell of burning rubber. So that's this side done, works really well, very pleased with it. And now for the other side, I'll have to shorten this one. But really if you have this tube which fits nicely around here, 
you might as well just get two shorter ones because it's the easiest way. But I'll show you how to do both ways. So that's it for this video. All that's left for me to do is weld these joints here and weld on the cups nice and straight. And then later I'll put this in place. I'll make sure to weld it very strong because if you don't weld it strong, it will break because there will be some insane forces on this drive line. But I'm pretty sure it will work, especially this part. In here is a special bearing, a dual row bearing, which means there will be no play on the wheel and it will be able to handle the forces. So that's good. And to fit my wheel on this flange, I'll just make a little adapter to fit the bolt pattern. And also I'll make a little tensioner on here so I can tension the chain. I'll just weld a nut on the steel here and then the bolt goes into the nut and will push against here and tension my chain and that will be necessary because there is an awful lot of pulling going on on the chain of course so make sure to do that so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next part